I've been to China, you know. I've been to China, you know. Uh, quite a long time ago now, if I'm honest. Um, I'll be 48 in November. Uh, November the 3rd, that's... Um, that makes me a Scorpio. Um, when I was about... I don't know how old I was now. 1995? It's 2019 now, that's 40, 24, 24 years ago. I'd be, well, 24, I suppose, 23, maybe 24. Um, and basically I was working as a, an engineer, a service engineer, traveling the world. A great job for a single man, I suppose. Thinking about it now, it sounds way more glamorous than it actually was, but um, I suppose there was a bit of element of glamour to it. If you like long haul economy flights, airports and really smelly chicken factories so I went to China uh, the company I worked for uh, was installing uh, uh, systems computer systems shall we say I didn't know what to describe it then computer systems in chicken factories that was the, essentially what the company did um, to weigh and grade chickens on the production line I suppose if you vegan or vegetarian, the whole thought of it probably horrifies you. Uh, but anyway, people eat chicken. It was a few years before um, Hong Kong was to be handed back to the Chinese and the British and uh, I think the Dutch as well had had um, sort of um, schemes, if you like, to build out some of the infrastructure in China. Uh, and this was to do with a, a food factory and a chicken factory. Um, so yeah, so uh, it was quite a Quite an interesting experience for me. I hadn't travelled much before then. I'd had a couple of flights between Manchester and Belfast. Um, I can't remember. Maybe I'd been to Turkey, probably been to Holland, a few other places. But this was the first uh, first time I went somewhere a long way away. Uh, and as was always with the job, as was normal, you'd be on your own basically. And when you got to the uh, got to the job, you would um, you do everything basically. You would uh, project manage the job. Um, hopefully get someone else to do the span of work. I've never been a big uh, a big fan of physical labour, if I'm honest. I like to think that my intelligence and intellect will always get me through whatever the situation. And I hope that uh, my powers of persuasion will get somebody else to do that. So I suppose in, in that regard, I've been very lucky that um, I usually persuade people to do all the work. So China wasn't too bad because there was Dutch engineers there who thankfully had done most of the work. They were seasoned engineers that had been going to all remote parts of the world uh, for a long time. This was my first trip um, to the Asian uh, continent and uh, it was extremely interesting and uh, I have many, many, many uh, stories to tell about my uh, exploits there. Uh, and it was it was really a big um, I'd say it really made me the person I am in many ways the experiences that I had there and I think I will certainly go into them in more detail in uh, in other um, episodes <laughs> but this evening um, I actually live in a place called uh, Dublin in Ireland uh, you may have heard it I went to my local supermarket and I was going to pick up a cheeky red um, as you'll probably discover, I, I do like a cheeky red wine. Um, don't really drink anything else. Um, yeah, red wine seems to be my uh, my forte. But I was perusing the shelves of um, Tesco's, and I was looking at the top shelf, um, primarily because that's where the wines over twelve euro are, which um, for Tesco's here is is the more expensive uh, bottles. I'm always intrigued to see. Because they do have to make a bit of a bit of a deal of the wine if they're going to charge you more money for it, and I did notice, um, well, based on the area that I live in, that uh, most of the wines over twelve euro had security tags on them, and the one that caught my eye was uh, <laughs> was no different. It had a security tag on it, um, but what uh, really uh, drew me to this wine, and I'll, I'll be quite honest with you, I think it'll actually be rubbish. Um, it was twelve euro. It was three euro off. Um, and it's Chinese. Uh, Chang Yu um, is what it's called. It's got Noble Dragon um, written on the bottle, as well as, I'm assuming, the equivalent Chinese. Um, and a, a lovely, lovely picture um, of, 
and I really don't know the name for it. If it was Japan, I'd say a pagoda, but uh, what are the equivalents? Like a, a small mini castle with archways. Uh, I don't know if this is where they make the wine. You've got some trees there, so it could be the it could be the vineyard. And it's made by the Chang Yu Pioneer Wine Company Limited in a place called Yantai in China. And, okay, it's Chinese, which is exceptionally unusual for red wine. It's in Tesco's, which was quite a surprise. But what to me was more appealing was the fact that um, it's from Yantai in China. And uh, I have been to Yantai in China many years ago. Actually, 24 years ago. And, yeah, it was interesting. So... I don't think I'll drink it because I know it's going to be rubbish. But I'm going to put it on the shelf here. Maybe one day I will.